here's a burning question. Do you all still use the Dewey Decimal System? Yes, we do. Do you really? Do you remember learning that? That's yes, cool. absolutely. Hi, I'm Todd Farmer. And I'm Sam Wright. And this is What Should You Ask? Today, we are talking about questions you should ask when you get your library card in all things library, right? That's right. So what's your favorite book growing up, Todd, either uh, either an adult book or a kid's book? You know, it's funny. This will probably surprise you. When I was a younger, I absolutely loved comic books. That didn't really surprise me. I was an avid, avid comic book reader when I was a kid. Yeah, that didn't surprise me. Are comic books still popular? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. My I, one read a lot of comic books. The younger one doesn't read a lot of comic books. Um, did you go to the library often when you were sure, growing up? Sure. I, I remember too. as a young kid going in there in the summers, and and it really uh, sparked an interest that I had in reading. I think I was one of the only friends of mine that really read a lot of books. I still read. I think I still read a book a week. Yeah. Every week of the year. Do you uh, remember the Dewey Decimal System? I remember what it is, but I probably couldn't pass a test right now. I couldn't either. It is some uh, numerical and decimal point system to keep track of books. Well, I, when I travel, a lot of times I'll read a business book, but there is one book, a fiction book, that really I think that's left an impression on me that I've probably given to a number of people. It's called A Year of Living Biblically. And I've given this book as a gift to four or five people. Uh, the author is Jewish, and he says he's about as Jewish as Olive Garden is Italian. And he says every week, he's, whatever, the, whatever the Old Testament said to do, he was going to do. And he chronicles it over a year. Hmm. It's really a fascinating read. I've given that book out to probably 10 people. Do you read fiction or do you read nonfiction? I usually read nonfiction. But you, uh, yeah. You See, would. I read fiction. Yeah. You know, I, as I say, I get enough reality between eight and five that I want a little uh, fantasy after five. So I read fiction <laughs> books. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. What would be the title of your autobiography? Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I think mine would be If You Want Something Right, dot, 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 with an ellipsis at the end of it. Yeah. So we, we read every weeknight. Plus Sunday night. So every night that we're getting ready to go to school the next day, we read on those nights. There's a group read and there's an individual read. The group read is like they're running through Harry Potter. And then the individual reads we read with, are usually read with the six-year-old and Ashley reads with the, well, the 11-year-old reads on his own. But it's kind of a habit we have. Yeah, when my kids were little, we had a routine where we would read to them before we went to sleep at night. And um, there are four or five of those books. I know right where they are in our house. And I'll probably never give those books away because it reminds me of the time that we spent together reading those books. Yeah, it's like it's one of the few times where I can get my kids sitting, focused, you know, next to me without, you know, going nuts. You know, one time I thought that I was going to write a book. I always want to write a book. It's one of my bucket list things to do. And I sat down many years ago to try to write a fiction book. And I had a general outline of what I wanted to do. But that was so hard. I had no idea it was going to be that difficult. I didn't think I'd write something that'd be good, but I thought I could at least finish it. But it was so difficult. I have thought about writing a... So I grew up in Paducah. There's a lot of interesting characters in, in and from Paducah, both present and past. Life doesn't stop just because you're injured. In fact, life keeps going on around you and gets tougher. If you find yourself incapacitated or otherwise unable to go about normal life because of an accident, it's time to talk to attorneys Farmer and Wright. Don't delay. The sooner you file your personal injury lawsuit, the better. Farmer and Wright have helped people just like you get compensation for their medical bills, lost wages, property damage, and other costs. Fight for what's yours. Talk to Farmer and Wright today. Go online to Farmer Right, that's right with a W, dot com. Welcome back. I'm Todd Farmer. And I'm Sam Wright. Thanks for joining us on What Should You Ask? Today, we've got Library Director Justin Brasher. Justin is in the McCracken County Public Library. So, Justin, you've lived all over the place from Louisiana, Colorado, Florida, Texas, and now Kentucky, right? 
Yes. Uh, I feel like Louisiana is a little unfair. Like I was born there and I was there for about six months. When it my parents... You got to count it. Which part of Louisiana was it? Lafayette. Okay. Don't know anything about it. So I, you're a third generation librarian, right? Yes. Uh, my mom is a retired library director and my aunt has been with Library of Congress for a number of years. So she feels she's always been kind of a grandmother to me. So yeah, got it. You know, I still remember as a kid in the summers going to the library in the mornings, in the summers for a bunch of programs. And I think that's one thing that started my affinity for reading. I'm an avid reader today. How has the community library changed since we've moved into a digital world? We have constantly evolved to try and meet the digital world. For example, you know, whether it's our website, you can reserve a meeting room online where you can host things inside our library. We have e-cards where you can sign up to electronically get books and movies available to your phone. Uh, we have apps for ebooks, audiobooks, movies, TV shows. You can get it all on any device. So you're telling me instead of like paying to download an ebook, it there's probably a good chance that the library I could get access to it electronically for free, right? Absolutely. If we don't have it, you can request it. And, and you'll get we, it, won't you? Yeah. And then we get it. Yeah. Here's a burning question. Do you all still use the Dewey Decimal System? Yes, we do. Do you really? Do you remember learning that? In yes. School? Absolutely. Do you have card catalogs? No. Okay. Why should I get a library card? Well, let me ask you. Do you like TV shows? Do you like movies, music, audiobooks? Sure. Comic books? You probably got kids who like video games? Yes. We've got all those at the library. Ah. You have video games at the library? Oh, yeah. Isn't that bastardizing the library? <laughs> like, like, do, like, they, like Xbox games? Yeah, like Xbox, PlayStation. I'd make them check out a book with the Xbox. I would say, you can have this Xbox game. Here's the book. <laughs> I want a little summary when you bring it all back. I mean, chances are, depending on the video game, there's probably a book based on it. So That's probably true. You know, hey, you get the latest, you know, video game. Like, you, could oh. you can trick them into reading. Oh, you read the, play the game, read the X-Men book. Yeah, and then you get to, yeah, and you can play the game. That's awesome. But that's good, though, that there's all those resources there. Oh, yeah, it's there to level the playing field. I mean, you got kids who can't buy the newest $60 video game because it's so expensive, but you yeah. get it at the library for free. And a lot of times I'll go into a bookstore to buy a book, and I get really frustrated because I leave and I didn't get anything because I didn't, I didn't know where to look. Where do I start? We have a lot of knowledgeable staff. All of our books in the library are ordered by staff. Like we have knowledgeable staff who order stuff every day. So when you come in and say, hey, I'm looking for a book on, I don't know, graphic novels. I'm looking for a new fiction author. Where do I start? Come to us. We can tell you. We actually have little guides in the library where if you say, I'm looking for Westerns, bam, here's a brochure with all the top Western authors right now. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That's great. We try to make it as easy as possible. That is great. So do you all still have like a book club or do you all get together and discuss popular books? Does something like that still happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, we have a lot. I mean, when I came here to the library, a lot of libraries have a few clubs, but I was surprised at how many McCracken County has. I mean, we have it's called the Fit Lit Walking Club where you walk and then talk about your books. Uh, we have, I like it. Yeah. It's nice. We've got a Happily Ever After Romance Club. If folks like for either the McCracken County Library or other libraries, like how do you figure out what clubs there are, how to join? Is most of that on library websites? Uh, all that's on library websites. Um, for ours, our clubs came out of both necessity and just what our staff are into. Um, like we have a rainbow book club that's geared towards the LGBTQ community mm -hmm. um, because we want to be as inclusive yeah. and diverse as we, as we can to meet the needs of the community. Got to give them what they want. Exactly. Um, but we also have a few staff on on hand who are also avid cyclists. And we also have a pedal in Paducah club where you get to cycle around town and talk about your favorite books. Huh? Yeah. A lot of our stuff has come from just staff saying, I like this. And then channeling it into something that we offer. One of our staff is a very accomplished fisher person, mm -hmm. uh, fisher woman. And uh, she helped develop an entire new program for loaning out fishing rods and lures. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We call it the Rods and Reels program. And you come in with your library card, check out a fishing rod. You get to keep the lures. 
And yeah, it's we designed it out of necessity during the pandemic. We were trying to think what is something that is uh, socially distant and yeah. still meets the needs of the community. And we thought, let's go fishing. You know, I love, you know, reading books online, but there's something to be said for, I still love a physical book. Oh yeah. My wife, she got a Kindle for a little bit, kind of liked it, but she's back to the good old regular book. There's something to be said about the the weight, the the smell of a book. There's just, there, there's just something about it that if, if you're a big hardcore reader, sometimes there, there's no substitute for it. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I've learned to trade the the weight of a Kindle as well. There's there's something to be said about it, especially if you are hard of sight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our Kindle options allow you to you know view the screen you know on a backlit background, so yeah. it's easier reading. Uh, you can zoom in to make the font bigger. Um, we also have audiobook options, so if you have trouble reading, you, we can it, it will read the story to you. So you That's all cool. have a large selection of audiobooks. We do. I love, I used to love pre-cell phone. Yeah. I would always go down and get an audio book when I would drive someplace. And it just, I was just amazed how time would pass. Plus, it's such a, an effective use of your time versus sitting around driving, you know, right? You can use your time effectively. Where do you see the library going? What are your goals for enhancing the library or moving forward? Well, my my job is to try and see what the needs are in the community and how best to meet them. Um, the pandemic has brought about a lot of evictions, a lot of food and housing insecurities. And one of the things that we're currently pursuing is trying to find a social services worker or a social service librarian who can help partner in the community and find more resources like for those in need. Info desk kind of thing for resources. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Someone who can help bring, who can help connect those dots. Someone yeah. who says, I need help with something, whether it's food insecurity, health and wellness insecurity. We can, we're able to say, we know someone and refer them to that person and get them the help that they need. That's great. Okay, so we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we've got Matt Yeager, the school outreach coordinator, who's going to be joining us to answer questions about library programs for kids under 18 years old. This is What Should You Ask? You might think that filing for bankruptcy is something that only big corporations do, but sometimes individuals have to declare bankruptcy too. You might find yourself in a situation beyond your control. Maybe you've lost your job, were involved in an accident, or just went through a divorce. Attorneys Farmer and Wright can help you through these tough times. If you find yourself having to declare bankruptcy to eliminate debts you can't pay, call Farmer and Wright immediately. They'll meet with you, offer compassion, and fight for you. Go online to FarmerWright, that's right with a W, dot com. Welcome back. I'm Todd Farmer. And I'm Sam Wright. Thanks for joining us on What Should You Ask? So we now have McCracken County School Outreach Coordinator, Matt Yeager, joining us with questions or so that we can ask you questions about the library youth programs, right? Excellent. Yes. Matt, tell us a little bit about who you are and, and what you do. I've been in Paducah uh, since I was 12, making that uh, 35 years at this point. So I consider myself a Paducan, but um, I've been a librarian or worked in a library for the past eight years. Uh, I've been a, a writer, uh, worked in nonprofits, been a teacher. Um, finally, finally found my calling in library work. Um, That's good. So, yeah. It, tell us about your, your, uh, member of the Kentucky Bluegrass Awards Committee. Uh, tell us what that is. Yeah, that's a state committee uh, made up of librarians who read, read, read all the books that come out in a particular year and pick a top 10 list for various age groups. So I'm on a committee that focuses on books for third through fifth graders. And I probably read about 60 to 70 books a year for that committee. Um, and we all, all, everybody who serves on this committee weighs in, publish our our top 10 list books for each category, for each age group in May. And then th those lists are used by schools in terms of their programming. What are some good books for fifth graders? <laughs> They're, uh, let's see, uh, put me on the spot here, but I order for the juvenile fiction section, which is anything from, it's when kids start reading chapter books. That's what juvenile fiction refers to. Okay. And so if you really start thinking about the history of juvenile fiction, you're not, you're not just talking about good books. You're talking about the world's greatest books ever written. 
So juvenile fiction includes authors like Roald Dahl, Mm -hmm. E.B. White, C.S. Lewis, Mm -hmm. Madeline Langle. I mean, the the juvenile fiction section of the library is the greatest section of the library. So those are are omnipresent within our collection always. Graphic novels are very popular among readers right now. Okay. Um, Series are always very popular. Um, Series that many listeners probably have heard of, like Magic Treehouse, Junie B. Jones, that sort of stuff. But And Diary of a Wimpy Kid never goes away. I believe it's the number one seller on the New York Times list right now. We we love that at our house. Mm-hmm. But Henry loves the book. My six-year-old hadn't started yeah. it yet. So tell us about A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten. What is that? It is a nationwide program. It's something our library participates in as well. It sounds like a lot, but it's a program to get toddlers pre-kindergarten to read with their parents, their caretakers, a thousand books. It sounds like a ton, but you'd be surprised if you're an avid reader uh, a parent reader, how quickly a thousand books can be read. Yeah, especially, you know, some of the shorter books, you can mm-hmm. burn through those things oh, yeah. quick. Right. So, um, but it sounds daunting, a thousand books. Where do you find a thousand books? Um, that's why you belong to the public library. Sure. So if somebody wanted to, um, if they if they wanted to get involved um, with reading to their kid, they could come see you, right? Or, or, yes, or some any, other. Any of our youth staff could clue them in as to how to sign up for the Thousand Books program. Um, we have an app called Beanstack that we use that tracks all of our reading programs for, for youth, kids, our summer reading programs. So you can sign up for a Thousand Books before kindergarten on Beanstack. Keep track of your books on there. We have parents come in checking out 20, 30 books at a time. And if you want to add up in your head how much 20 to 30 children's picture books cost, you can see why it behooves everybody to become a member of the public library. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So other than books, what other resources are out there for kids? We have, I I know in the previous segment, Justin Brasher, our director, mentioned all of our apps. And that's very important, the apps that we collaborate with, including one called Hoopla, which offers e-books, e-audiobooks, narrated books for kids. For those who are reluctant readers, the book reads along with them. Um, They're kind of animated. There's another service called TumbleBooks that does the same thing. We have learning databases available on our website. We have a computer lab, and though it's not on the second floor in the youth services, and though it's not dedicated specifically for children, it's often populated by children Hmm. um, and their parents, and they come up and gather and use the computers. We have video games that kids can check out. Did you ever check out library books only to remember that it had been a month? Oh, I'm, we're probably on the most wanted list. Our family at the McCracken County Public Library <laughs> about overdue books and whatnot. Yeah. Let me uh, let me just clue you in. Last summer, we did a complete amnesty on all yes. fines at the library, and now we don't even have late fees anymore. Yes, that was big news <clears> at our house, <throat> by the way. No joke. Yeah. My wife was like, you won't believe what's happened. We've struck gold. We don't have to pay the, <laughs> the uh, late book so fees. We so don't, we don't have late fees at the library. The only the only way you'd ever get charged with something is if you're pretty malicious with a book or uh, or lose it. So, yeah. yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. What's required for a kid to get their library card? First age, they have to be at least five. Okay. So, you have to be five years old. If you want a full service card, which means a physical library card, uh, that you can take materials out of the library, you were you need a parent signature. Okay. um, Because there is a slight bit of a financial commitment if a book is lost. Yep. But other than being five and having a parent signature, that's all all a kid needs to get a public library. Be bonafide, right? If you like what you've heard, make sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to where you listen to podcasts. If you loved what you heard, then leave us a review where you listen and tell anybody that we're at whatshouldyouask.live. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we ask, what should you ask about life topics? So make sure you come back to hear about what we're asking. What Should You Ask is hosted by Todd Farmer and Sam Wright. The producer is Jennifer Caldwell. Visit whatshouldyouask.live to download additional episodes, suggest a future topic, or get a free book from the host.
The information provided on this podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as legal advice on any subject matter. You should not act or refrain from acting based on any content mentioned without seeking legal or other professional advice in your area. The hosts, guests, and sponsors remove themselves from all liability for actions you take or fail to take based on any content in this broadcast.